I'm going to share with you guys how I pipped my boyfriend in real life. For those of you not in tech, PIP stands for Performance Improvement Plan, and it's what you get put on when they're about to fire you. So that TikToker has gone viral because she has put her boyfriend on a performance improvement plan, and she's been documenting it on TikTok. Um, so her name is Nadine, and we should watch a little more of her video, and I'm curious what you think, Cenk. So my boyfriend and I were having a lot of issues in the beginning, like a lot. And ultimately I felt like we weren't compatible even though we had a lot of love for each other. So as a last straw, we decided to do like a performance improvement plan. And before you come at me, I know it's kind of harsh to some of you, but he's an engineer and sometimes it's really hard to communicate with him without using something that he can already relate to. Plus he kind of liked it. So we had a shared note with daily and weekly tasks he needed to do and a set of things that he needed to work on. And it worked out really well. Like even now for our household chores, things that he's responsible for, we use a Kanban board. That has been the only thing that has stuck and works. Like anything I need done, I just add it onto the Kanban board and he'll get it done. But if I just tell him, he'll forget about it. We also do weekly retrospectives where we check in with each other at the end of each week to see how we're doing. And that's my favorite. No, I would, uh, no, <laughs> no, thank you. Really? Yeah. Like, uh, we're gonna have work like meetings in the context of our intimate relationship? Yeah, sounds super romantic. Um, so, uh, look, I, I get it. He's an engineer and he's, she's saying that he responds better to it. I, I thought maybe the most relevant part is when she said, He's into it, and I thought, well, you do you, boo, right? I right. don't know what your fetish yeah, is. Yeah, I mean, if they're into okay. it, then. Okay, uh, but uh, complicated, uh, the relationships are complicated things too, I'll add on top. So she says, you know, we have a lot of love for each other, but we weren't getting along. Um, and But a lot of people, people do feel that way, right? And so the, every relationship is a mess, <laughs> okay? And it's a mess in its own different ways, because it's two human beings trying to relate to one another, when they don't have the same perspective. And so, and they're not structured in the same way, they're two different people. So it's it's hard out there, I get it. Having said that, hell to the no. Yeah. Okay, so if somebody puts you on a performance improvement plan for who you are, that is not the right person for you. By okay. the way, I mean, I'm sure most of you know, but just in case, like performance improvement plans is like where your management thinks you're slacking off at work. And so they get you on a performance improvement plan to basically let you know, shape up or you're getting fired, right? And then there's goals or whatever that's like baked into that system. I just think like introducing the trauma you experience at work in your intimate relationship might not bode well in the long run, even though in the short term they're into it, right? No, it's it, of course, I mean, we're underselling it. Guys, the most people have the, the reaction that I had originally, which is, oh, so you need me on an improvement plan. How about your goddamn improvement plan, okay? How about we work on that, including not asking your boyfriend to go on a goddamn improvement plan, okay? You want an improvement plan, I got one for, I'll write it out right now. All the ways that you could improve. So why is this conversation about me improving? Why don't you go improve your own ass? Well, okay, okay so she says this in um, the video, the description of the video. We started living together really early on in our relationship. So we saw all of each other's living habits and lifestyles super quickly. I had to learn to be more accepting and easygoing. How's that working out? It doesn't <laughs> seem like that one's stuck. And he had to learn to be more tidy and considerate of shared spaces. Mm. Okay. No, but that's fair too, right? Yeah. If she's used to being tidy and the guy's throwing, you know, his socks in the on the fan, right? That's not going to work. Is that out. what you do? Is that like well, an interesting, there, right? interesting example that you gave there? <laughs> I don't know. I don't. Know. It's like out of a movie. I love how like that would literally take more effort than just throwing it in the hamper, right? Of course. Yeah. But you don't, know, guys. Um, now. She did get criticized by commenters, so. No, really? Online? Yeah. There was critique? So user 9847006735111 says, this is so condescending, okay? Yeah, for sure. Yep, that was the top comment. I'm just not positive they have enough numbers in their <laughs> handle. Kate writes in, says, I prefer not to be someone's manager or assign tasks though. That's such a great point by Kate. Yeah. Because not only does you put your boyfriend in this fairly demeaning position, uh, and it casts you as the boss, but it also casts you as like an annoying bureaucrat who has to go and judge his life 24 7. 
if she hadn't lost me from second one, she certainly would have lost me when she got to the weekly retrospective. Now let's see what you've done wrong this week. Oh, say it again, say it again, because I'm about to pack my bags. So say it one more time. So there were people who agree with her, though. Um, so one person says it's a very nice way of communicating instead of yelling and screaming at each other. Which, sure, if that's what the standard is, like it's either. But if, yeah, is that yeah. your only alternative? Right, exactly. It's like, exactly. Like, well, I was thinking of firing my boyfriend and I put him in a bureaucratic hell instead. You know what? But I could have yelled at him. But look, to be fair, I, I just realized something. It's something clicked. I had an epiphany. Oh, okay. look at this. So my one. I react poorly to micromanaging, right? Like if someone's micromanaging me, like it really gets under my skin. This is true. And it's because I don't need the micromanaging. Like I I I work hard, I like to get my job done. Like you know what I'm saying? But there are people who need that guidance. There are yeah. some people who not only react well to micromanaging, but they prefer it. In fact, I've had a conversation with someone about that in this company, right? Yeah. A worker at this company and I was just like, that's interesting. It's an interesting perspective. Anyway, I say all that because yeah, I guess even in the context of a relationship, some people like to be micromanaged, right? Cuz this is what that is. That's that's exactly what this is. Yeah, and and look, I'm halfway kidding when I say if that's his fetish, right? Um it might be that he's simply uh you have like, to tell guys exactly what you want. I, I've learned that. I, I don't have my husband on a performance improvement plan, but there's no dropping hints and then he picks it up and he knows exactly what I want. No, you have to be very clear. I need you to take out the trash. I, I don't say it in that tone, by the way. Like, hey, babe, can you take out the trash? And he'll do it, there's no problem. But if I do what I used to do, where it's like, <sighs> <laughs> like you know, like pressing down the trash and like <laughs> that's, that's way too subtle for a guy. You crazy? He's not gonna get it. He's not gonna get it. You just have to be very clear, concise. They'll get it. Yeah, uh, it's just slack them uh, on on the need for. Okay. Anyways, no seriously, different guys communicate in different ways. That's what I was getting to. And and so and we've talked about love languages, uncomfortable uh, <laughs> earlier as well. And different people have different love languages. So it's. Like she's not necessarily totally wrong that it, hey maybe as an engineer his uh, mind is geared in a way that hey I like tasks broken down uh, clearly and and in individual pieces that I could uh, do one at a time and stuff that might totally be true and by the way like I'm only halfway kidding when I it might be that he likes being bossed around right that like that he gets into that like okay so she throws in a healthy uh, dose of scolding and he might stay with her forever. Oh, okay? okay, he might put a ring on All it. All right. Okay, so I don't know their thing and that's up to them. Uh, and so we're all having fun here. Don't actually get mad at them. Let no, them live their life. it's their lives. Like yeah. if this is what they want and if this is what works for them, great, more power to them. We're just talking about our context and whether we would like it. And I know that I wouldn't, it's just not for me. Yeah, especially if you're not married yet, right? When you, you're married, you got kids, there's a lot of uh, things that go along with that, tons of commitment. They, and it's very, like, very literal. You made a commitment to one another, etc. Uh, so that's a different standard. If I'm going out with someone and somebody says, hey, you know what, I think you're lacking. So I'm gonna put you in a performance improvement plan and we're gonna have weekly check ins where I analyze how you are as a human being and judge you. Mm. No, you're not. Because this is actually the last conversation we're having. <laughs> By the way, and it really has worked for them. So she put her boyfriend on a performance improvement plan at the three month mark, and they've now been together for three years. Now look at that. So he's definitely That's the longest into it. anyone's ever been on a pip. That's a long pip. <laughs> and to be fair to her, she's a fair boss. I guess. Like yeah. she was, she wasn't in because if you're doing a performance improvement plan right, your intent is not to fire people. It's to help them improve, mm, okay? Mm. Like that's true in good companies, and in 99% of other companies, no, they're, you're gonna get fired, okay? So, but in in her case, she was a good company. She was a good boss, mm, right? Mm, yeah. Actually, gave him a real opportunity. Great and he's dynamics. Delivered for three great years. Great dynamics. Yep. And mm -hmm. I hope he filled out his uh, performance review. Yeah. Graded himself, and later Dude, we'll be going over that self assessment. Like, I don't want to manage anyone. Mm -hmm. Including here, you get what I'm saying? Like yeah. it's so like managing is so hard. 
You telling me, man? It's just like, and I don't want, I don't want to lord power over people. Like you know, there's it that. It makes too. me deeply uncomfortable. Yeah, it's super uncomfortable. I remember, so now we're having fun inside baseball stuff. Mm -hmm. um, no, so hold on. Before we get to the fun, I want to do right by Kate. Okay. Okay. Kate produced this story, and she went the extra mile to research what can help in a relationship. And I freaking love that she did this. So Northwestern medicine psychologist Shaheen Fisher, or Sh yeah, Shaheen Fisher created a handy list of healthy relationship habits. Listen to each other and communicate without judgment. Trust and respect each other. Consistently make time for each other, that's a big one. Remember details about each other's lives. Also listen, right? That's how you learn about each other's lives. Engage in healthy activities together, work collaboratively as a team rather than as two self-serving individuals. Or two competing individuals, which happens sometimes in yeah. relationships. So, so nice job, Kate. Those are helpful hints, totally true, Yeah. okay? Um, uh, so wonderful, now, um, when, we were in the early years of TYT, Jill Pike used to be here. She was one of the first original co-hosts, me, Ben Manquist and Jill Pike. I love Jill, she's a great person and she was critical in the in the beginning of TYT. And after each show, we would do a meeting. Ben would leave immediately and not participate. <laughs> I remember. Of course, okay. But the rest of us would get together and I would say, all right, uh, Jesus, uh, what do you think we should do to spread the videos or whatever? JR, what do you think? Uh, Jill, Dave, uh, etc. So all those guys are still here except Jill, right? Mm -hmm. And um, uh, but I hated being the boss and and managing and saying, "Hey, did you do that?" Right? Yeah. Oh, I hate that. Yep. This is checking in on someone, did they do their work? Did they not do their work? Holding them accountable, uh, uh, oh, I, you really do hate that. Yeah, and um, and one day Jill pulls me aside and says, "Hey, listen, you're the fucking boss. Act like it." Damn. I was like, "What?" She's like, "Just get over it already, okay? We can all see your the thing you're struggling with, and you don't want to give orders, yeah, no, etc. But we got to get shit done." And somebody has to lead that, so step up and do it, own it, right? And it was one of the best pieces of advice I've ever gotten. So thank you, Jill Pike. And from then on, I boss people around and I put them on pips. No, no. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. You're, you're still struggling with it, but you're 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 getting better, I think. You no, know? no, I, I. It's hard. It's hard. Let me yeah. just say, look. Management is a skill, it really is. And like we have negative reactions to management because of obvious reasons, right? But when you really take yourself and your bias out of it and just take that role for what it is, it a good manager is very skilled. Like that is a skill that because a good manager doesn't just go around bossing people around, right? A good manager builds mutual respect. Yeah. And I look, I think Judith's an excellent manager. I'm just gonna say it. She, she said it. She's very good. So Judith's our head of programming and she is, she's excellent. Um, so um, look guys, uh, two giant problems at work and in uh, your personal life too. Uh, one that is shared by both is miscommunication. Leads to tons and tons of problems. But that leads to the second one that a viewer wrote in about in a completely different story, which is um, assuming bad intent. Okay, uh, don't do that because if you when you combine miscommunication with assuming bad intent, it creates a volatile situation where people are constantly blaming each other. Take a minute, talk it through, figure out what each person's intent was, and you'll invariably go, "Oh, I see." And there, somebody got it a little wrong. That's the whole point of miscommunication. Or maybe both parties got it wrong, but they didn't necessarily do it with bad intent. Mm -hmm. So these are among the eight thousand lessons I learned in becoming a manager over the last, you know, twenty-one years of running this place. I've become a lot more comfortable with it. I think I'm better at it. And no, it isn't about yelling at people or being militarist, militaristic or dominating people. It's about getting the best out of people by yeah. believing in them and setting the right structure for it. Absolutely. So I, I wanted to just make sure that I corrected something. So Kate is the one who pitched the last story that we did, but our intern Sabrina, Sabrina, produced nice it. work. That was you went the extra mile. Oh God. 
love the main show team. All right, Incredible. nice job, Sabrina, good work. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.